the moral decay in America continues to erode any sense of values that we have. Transgender priest preaches in D.C. D.C. is a power base of the country. One of the most, well, let me say that again, the most corrupt place in our country. This is the article about it. An Episcopalian chaplain who became the first openly transgender priest to preach at the historic National Cathedral in D.C. The Reverend Dr. Cameron Partridge, one of seven openly gay clergy in the Episcopal Church, spoke from the Canterbury pulpit in honor of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender communities Pride Month. As Partridge told congregants in his guest appearance, he was proud to be part of a church that was pushing the acceptance of all people, regardless of sexual orientation or identity. This person is saying he and everyone else should be proud that they are going against the teachings of the God that, that he would stand up and claim to be preaching God's teachings. I don't know whether to call it a he or a she. Anyhow, as we behold one another in these days of celebration, may we honor the way we sustain each other. Apparently, he used to be a man. Partridge, who began transitioning, oh, excuse me, it was a female, to male from female over a decade ago, is the Episcopal chaplain at Boston University and a lecturer and counselor at Harvard Divinity School. Reverend Gene Robinson, the first openly gay Episcopal bishop, presided over the service on Sunday, which included readings and prayers by gay, lesbian, and transgender church members. The Episcopal Church, an independent U.S.-based institution affiliated with global Anglicanism, voted in 2012 to allow the ordinance of transgender people and also approve same-sex marriage blessings. Last week, a gathering of U.S. Presbyterian church leaders followed suit, voting to allow their clergy to perform same-sex weddings. The Episcopal Church approved its first openly gay bishop in 2003 when Reverend Robinson ascended to lead the Diocese of New Hampshire. The move was met with controversy. Hundreds of parishes opposed his consecration, saying the church was becoming too liberal. I can't stress this enough, and I can't help it if you don't like it. If you don't like what I'm saying, if you don't like to hear the truth, then there's a little button called unsubscribe, and, and you can leave. Because I'm telling you the truth. God does not approve of this type of an abominable behavior, and it is in his faith. It is out in your face, right in the open. People who would claim to preach and believe his word have mutated it into an abomination to where they are openly going against his teaching and saying it is okay. And I am telling you and all of them, it is not okay. It is time to take a stand. You're on one side or you're on the other. You're on Satan's side where anything goes because it feels so good and you want it to feel good because sin has a mighty grip around you and it's holding you so tight that it has distorted your thinking So it's time, people. It is not in all the churches, but you do have members of each church, you can rest yourself assured, that are living the lifestyle 
of of the LGBT, whether they come out and say it, or whether they're still cloaked in the closet. If they were all to die today and meet God to receive judgment, it is too late then to finally understand, oops, I got it wrong. Sorry, can I have another chance? I won't do it again, I promise. That does not work like that. They will have to receive punishment. What, what does one individual believe punishment for an abomination is? Do you think it's just a slap on the wrist? No, it's going to be severe. So change the lifestyles is what they have to do. We've got to pray for these people. I said it before, I'll say it again. Sometimes you drive people farther into what they are, the more you hammer at them to get out of it. That doesn't mean you have to keep, that doesn't mean you have to stop trying to talk to them about it. But one thing you can definitely do is consult the Lord about it. And whether he does or not, in their hereafter, you can ask him to forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Not in the big picture. Here in the now, they think they know what they're doing. But in the next realm of the hereafter, they understand they didn't know what they were doing. So... This is what I'm talking about, about our country and having judgment levied against it and having turned away from the teachings of the Lord. We're at the highest office, Barack Obama, Washington, D.C. That's as high as it gets. And he is definitely... Satanist. He embraces all negativity, all anti-normalcy. He and his cohorts throughout the world are destroying everything. It's time for you to wake up, America. You've been preaching this for Three years now, other people longer. Now is the time. You have to take a stand. There is no putting it off anymore. You have to decide which side you're going to be on, the right side or the wrong side. And don't make the argument that the wrong side is the right side. Because when judgment comes, that's that. I'm sorry I had to be so firm, but sugarcoating things isn't the way to go. Especially when you're so far off center, and they truly are like lost sheep. They've lost their way from the flock. And God's going to look for them. But they keep running away from him no matter how far that he's looking. Each one is valuable to him, just as valuable as the entire flock. And he wants them to come back into the fold. And when you pray for all the people of the world, think about all the evils of the world. People that are messed up in twisted lifestyles like this. And they definitely need our help. Whether they know we're praying for them or not is not the point. The point is we care about them. And we don't want to see them lost to the dark side. 
I don't know how much longer it's going to be before this country gets severe judgment. I don't think it's that much longer off. And by that, I mean, I think it'll be within a year. It may be into the beginning of next year or so, sometime through the summertime of next year. But things are definitely going down the crapper. We used to stand for things, and now we stand for nothing. We stand for everything we stood against before. I guess that's the best way to put it. The things we stood against in the past, we now embrace and stand for them. God help the world because we have some dire times coming upon us.